Hi, I'm Charlotte and thank you for stopping by on my channel. Today is actually the first day that I am filming a video at all and um, I wasn't sure what to do but I decided in the end I'm just going to start with my favorite books of 2021. This way you could get kind of an idea of, um, of what books I like, what kind of styles I like, how I read and then I think my second or maybe my third video then I will do a book to newbie tag and I will talk more about my general reading habits but I thought the nice way to get to know each other would be to start with what were my favorite books last year. Um, I thought a lot about what I would choose. I had some names in my head but then I looked back at my list and uh, in the end I selected six books. That was kind of the ballpark I was aiming for because I read in total a little bit over 50 books last year. Actually, I think it was 51, and um, which, which is not huge for booktube in general when you look at how much other people read. But for me, it was a, was a good amount. It's an amount that fits well with the way that I live my life and with how much time I have for reading and with how fast I read. I thought that having six favorite books in uh, 50 books, which is just a little bit over 10%, was kind of reasonable and uh, and that they deserve the title of favorite for that. Those are the books that jump to me when I look at my list as the books that really impacted me and all that I really loved reading during this last year. I think I'm just going to go through in the order that I read them. As you will see and as you probably hear, I'm a native French speaker and I read about half-half in French and English. And so in this collection, there are books that were written in French, books that were written in other languages but translated to French, and then there are books that were um, written in English and that are read in English. So I'm just going to start. The first book I selected is this nice old style book called, it's, it's a book in, written in French, it's called La Fraise Noire, which will translate to The Black Strawberry, and it is a collection of short stories by a Swiss author called S. Corinna B. She's a French-speaking Swiss author. And I had read some tales from her, fairy tales for children, when I was a child and I really loved them. And then years later, my great-grandmother left her home to go to an old people's house. And she had these beautiful books from a um, kind of a... Um, subscription service that existed in the French-speaking Switzerland in the I think the 50s to the 70s and three of them were Corinna B books and I picked them up and I never read them and then I decided last year okay I'm just gonna try one and I tried this one this short story collection book I have to say I really love the title I really love the way it looks because it's really nice and then I had a good surprise when I opened it because it has beautiful illustrations as well and I had even a better surprise when I actually read it because I loved it so much. Um, those are short stories that were written in the 1960s and they are set also in kind of the mid 20th century mostly in the region where she was from which is the French speaking Swiss Alps and those are stories about young people, mostly young women, going through transformative experiences. Um, they're about relationships between men and women. They're also about nature. It's beautiful, poetic nature writing. And they are quite dark. They are, very, they are about the, the darker darkest parts of existence, I think, in, in a lot of ways. But it makes them also universal because they speak about shared, painful or transformative experiences. And I love them. And they are a little bit poetic. Well, they are very poetic. They're a little bit supernatural or metaphysical, um, dreamlike, a lot of them. You have fantastical imagine creatures, you have magical woods, you have secrets 
and uh, nature related secrets and so i i found them really beautiful um there are also some that are incredibly sad there is one in particular called the killed child i mean it is no spoil the, the title spoils it but it's 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 a three pages story that is one of the most heartbreaking things i have ever read about a family with a little boy and through some random accident he gets killed on this beautiful day and it's it's awful it's awful but it's also it's like a, a punch to your heart it's wonderful writing if it, if it was written i think by anyone else it could be very corny or very melodramatic and it's none of that it's just about the absurdity of existence written in some of the most beautiful language i've ever read so it's really good i can only recommend it my favorite story is about a, a woman that is entering middle age and she just hurt herself for the first time seriously because kind of, of, of her age doing things she was used to do and suddenly her, her body doesn't want it anymore and she thinks about how her condition has changed and she enters this kind of dreamlike it's not a trance but it's like a, a dreamlike kind of, she kind of floats away in dreams while she's waiting for someone to bring her medicine for her pain and she thinks about about what being old means and how her position as a woman changes as she grows older and is not a young girl anymore and it's uh, it's wonderful um this book in this constellation has not been translated to english but i think there is a short story collection by Corinna B which has been translated i don't think it's that easy to find but i'm still going to put a reference because if if you read in english if you don't read french and you've never heard of her and you like what you heard me say about her then i really think you should try it okay so this is la fraise noire then the next book i chose i read in english i read in may and it is frost in may by antonia white um this book is part of the virago modern classic 30th anniversary collection which I bought last year as kind of a gift to myself and I am slowly reading uh, over a couple of years in an order that I arbitrarily chose because it felt right and this spring actually in May I read Frost in May by Antonia White this book was written in I think the 60s no it wasn't this book was written in the 30s in 1933. I think it's one of the only novels by this author, Antonia White, and it is a kind of novelized version of her youth in a Catholic convent school. Sounds a bit <laughs> dry, but it isn't. It's kind of a coming of age story of a young girl. You know, of a girl. She's. I think it starts. She's about 11 years old, and it goes until she's. I mean. Uh, an old teenager and she's sent to this convent school by her father who recently converted to Catholicism um, and it is a school that is normally attended by rich daughters of very affluent Catholic families and she is none of that like all Catholic nobility almost and she's this kind of they're, they're middle class yeah, they, you know like compared to those people they are poor and recently, recent Catholic converts, and so she has to integrate herself. And it talks about her friendship with the other girls. It talks about her kind of relationship to religion as it evolves. And it talks about what goes on at this school. And I, I'm not a Catholic, so for me, it's like reading some kind of exotic account of, of weird traditions. And, um, it's very funny. It has lots of humor in it. It is also very atmospheric. Uh, it's set in these old buildings and it talks about um, religious legends. But what I really loved was the character and 
the relationship she has to her friends and also her kind of wide-eyed marvel at this world which transforms into a kind of questioning or maybe even disillusion and and all of this in this in this beautiful language and a wonderful humor this for me was a, a highlight of the spring really loved it then i think actually right after frost in may i, I didn't remember it but I read this little book by Toni Morrison. I read it in French because a few years ago, before I decided that I would only read books written in English, actually in English, um, I bought two novels by Toni Morrison, um, A Mercy, which I have back there, which I read a couple of years ago. And then this one, I think it is called God Save the Child. God, sorry, God Help the Child. It is the last novel she published, written in 2015. This book talks about a young black girl, um, very dark-skinned girl, who disaffected in her childhood, and who, when, when we meet her, she's become a very successful uh, professional, working, uh, at a high position in kind of a cosmetics company. And one day in this adult life, something happens to her. She goes to meet a woman who just left prison. And we quickly understand that she knows this woman. And uh, the confrontation does not end well. And then this actually, she's called Bride, this girl. So Bride goes back home. And um, at about the same time, she gets broken up with by her boyfriend. And she's, it's also, it's, it's something that brings in lots of questions for her. She's very confused. She's also angry and um, she, she then goes on a trip to try and find the young man that left her. And something happens to her. I'm sorry, I'm not summarizing it really well because it, it's kind of complicated to summarize. And also I don't want to say too much because the beauty of this novel is how unexpected it gets. Um, but, but yeah, something happens to her body. She realizes that something is happening to her body. And it is a, maybe it is fantastical. Maybe it is really happening. Maybe it is something in her head. We don't really know, at least for a long part of the book. And it is, in any case, highly symbolic and very, I think it brings out lots of questions and interrogations about growing older, what happens to us in life, the impact of events and traumas onto life. Uh, in the specific case of Bride, but it could also be, I think, extended to a more universal question. And as always, the writing is, is beautiful. It's, 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 it's wonderful writing even translated to French. I, I think the translation is very good, actually. I really, I really like this translation. This one and the other one I read, just beautiful translation. And um, it leaves you with kind of deep thoughts on human condition. And I know it is maybe one of the less known novels by Toni Morrison, but uh, I highly recommend it. I thought it was a great reading experience. Okay, then shortly after that, I read that book called Les Vilaines by Camila Sosa Villada. It is a book translated from the Spanish. The author is from Argentina. She is a 
trans woman who wrote her first novel with this book and I know it will be translated next spring into English. The title is Bad Girls. I think it comes out in May. And if you read English and I just pick it up because it, this is pro, I, I don't have a list of what my favorite book of this year is, but this is definitely the one I think about most often. And I think I read it in June. So it was, it was like in the first half of the year. This novel, as far as I understood from reading the articles written, uh, the interviews of, of the author, is partly autobiographical. And it's about a group of trans women working as prostitutes in Buenos Aires. But this is a very reducing summary of this book. I don't know if it is reduced. It, it, this book encompasses so much. It's about the lives of this group of women who are shunned by society and horribly treated by people who also use them. I mean, they have clients who use them, but and it is a, a known fact. And trans women are, are recognized as women in Argentina, and yet they are put away from society and they are submitted to violence and discrimination in a never ending cycle. Is it a cycle? I don't know, but it, it never ends. And yet, this book also has some moments of flight and of magic. It's a book that works a lot with magical realism and of tenderness and of true human friendship and warmth. And somehow it manages to be very subtle. Who is good and who is bad is never completely clearly defined. People have many facets. I mean, people are, some people are monsters. Some people are awful, like through and through. But, but those women, they're not angels, they're not perfect, they're not always taking the high road or doing the best thing. They are complicated people as real life people are. And that makes them even more sympathetic to the reader, I think. And um, I actually maybe, so there is, there is kind of a plot to this book. I mean, I've I talked about it, like there is a plot and the main plot is one night, um, they, they work in a park, in a public park at night. And one night in the bushes, they find a little boy, a little baby alone and they take him in and um, take care for them. There is a, the, this group is headed by a woman um, and she owns a house where she, that is kind of a shelter for, for the girls who work there. And she takes on the baby and she decides to become his mother. And, and it's a lot about all of these women's relationship to this child, but especially the, the owner of the house relationship with this child. And this is interspersed with recollection from the protagonist's um, childhood and to her story before she arrived. At the house. I don't know if I'm doing a great job of, of summarizing it, but I, I honestly think yes, the plot is important. But what what is what is I think transformative about this book is its characters, the way they are described, the way their feelings and emotions are described, and also the, the magic of those moments where it seems like the, the, the sky is opening and, and sun is shining down on the world that is otherwise dark and gloomy and, and so, so brutal. So uh, yeah, I, I'm not, well, I don't know if I need to do any kind of trigger warning, but if you, if some things trigger you, look it up because this is, this has lots of violence in it, lots of violence against women, against children, 
it is uh, it it has brutal brutal scenes and uh, i wasn't sure if i would like it I, I picked it up because i was really interested then i read it pretty quickly after because i thought if i le let it linger on my shelf too long I, I won't have the courage to get to it and i read it and i was so glad i read it because yes it has like this, this huge amount of brutality but it also has this beauty in it that honestly i have never seen before in that way in any other novel and it, that's why i think about it so often so this is Livilen in may bad girls by camila sosa Villada. and then the last book i chose is a book i read quite recently and this is piranesi by susanna clark um, I read Piranesi on the weekend of Halloween, I think, because I didn't know what to read. I don't really do TBRs. Well, I did a kind of a summer TBR that worked halfway. And I, but I, I had a lot of books that I had bought during the year or even during the years before and said, oh, oh this would be a nice autumn winter book. And so I put them on a stack and then I decided, okay, I'm going to check, pick one book that I can read quickly because, um, because I, I want to read a book like over this weekend. And so I picked Piranesi because it is short. It's about, I don't know how many pages it is. It's 230 pages, something like that. And I read it thinking it would be a nice distraction and it was, but also I loved it. It was so good. It's a book that's been talked about a lot already this year by a lot of people, I think. Um, and I think it's best to know the least possible about it. So basically, when it comes to plot, it's about Veranese. He's a person who lives in a house that is not an ordinary house. That is a house like no other house we've ever seen. And there is another person living with him whom he calls the other and Piranesi helps the other in the other's research and then things happen and I'm gonna stop here because there's no need to know more about it what I loved about this book what made it get on my favorites list is Piranesi as a character he's a wonderful character I is probably my favorite character of the year one of my favorite characters I've ever read because he's both, he's smart, he's intelligent. He's someone who uses his brain and who uses logic and reasoning. But he also is someone who always expects people to be good. And it doesn't always help him, let's put it like that. But I think it's kind of a great mindset and it is especially wonderful to be in the head of such a character. I would love to meet someone like Piranesi, really. And uh, he also, he's in my head a lot. I think about him a lot. I think about this book a lot. Um, I think maybe one thing about it is I didn't say too much about the plot and, and because of this, and I think it's important. It's a book that's very confusing, probably in the beginning. You have to accept that you won't understand everything. But there is a payoff. The payoff is great. The payoff is great. Not only do you get Piranesi with you the whole time, but also like when it comes to solving the puzzle, I think it's very satisfying. All right. So those were my six favorite books of 2021. I hope this was at least a little bit interesting for you. I hope to see you back on this channel. And until then, I wish you all the best.